Hi there, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, today, I'm going to tell you guys what zero I use on my 22s. I got here a Ruger 1022. The zero that I use has, is 15 yards, and I'm going to tell you guys why I use it. Um, so the first thing I'm going to mention with this uh, 1022 over here, the scope that's on it, right? This Hollow Sun uh, 503CU um, is was basically designed to go on an AR-15. Okay, and most of the scopes that you guys are going to buy today um, are intended for AR-15s because they are the most popular guns in America. So with the AR-15, you've got a line of sight that is basically about two and three quarter inches above your barrel. Okay, um, and because of this of this difference, you know, you have to pick a zero. Okay, now, uh, now I know that most of you guys watching this are going to be somewhat familiar with this information, but we're talking about 22s here. So for a lot of people, this is going to be new. So let's talk about the double zero. Okay. So I've got a chart here. All right. And if you look over here, uh, I have a barrel with a scope over here. Right. And if you look at this, you know, basically this line over here, that's my line of sight. Right, so the line of sight from the scope is straight. Okay, so what we do with the barrel is since the, the scope is about two and three quarter inches uh, above the barrel, the barrel is essentially pointed slightly up so that when the bullet comes out at some point it intersects the line of sight. So with the with this uh, 1022 over here, um, with using the 22 long rifle, I have picked 15 yards. Right, 15 yards is where that medium the, not the big plate the, the the small plate with the stripe going through it is that okay so what i've done is i've picked a zero at 15 yards so uh because the barrel is pointed up bullet rises it intersects it at 15 yards so that's point of aim point of impact when i put my dot if you look at the, the head over there of that target you'll you'll notice three uh three paint chips right that are touching each other uh so i put the dot on that spot and pretty much all all three bullets were touching each other okay so wherever i put the dot that's where the bullet goes right that's at 15 yards and then what happens is because the barrel is pointed up right if i was shooting at a further distance the bullet would continue to rise right so at a, around 50 yards it's going to reach its apex right that's the high point which is about uh about two and three quarters i'm just going to say three inches um above that line of sight Okay, and then gravity is going to overcome it, start pulling it down. So at 75 yards, I get my second zero. It crosses back down. So at 75 yards, you're probably not going to be able to see it well over there, but uh, there's another red target over there. At 75 yards, same deal. I put my dot on the target and the bullets go where the dot goes. Okay, so at 15 yards, point of aim, point of impact. Okay. At 50 yards, I'm two and three quarter inches high. At 75 yards, again, point of point, point of aim, point of impact, and then my bullet starts dropping. So at at uh, 100 yards, I'm it, it basically drops six inches, right? So I'm six inches down. Uh, and if you look at the, the my targets, right, the ones that are hanging in the wood over there, uh, they're about 12 inches tall. So at 100 yards. Uh, if I put my dot, you know, anywhere above, basically, you know, if you look at that, that the bottom, right, because if you look at the bottom, if I put my dot anywhere between the, the, the thickest part of the target and the top of that plate, it's going to hit it, okay? So the reason why I use, put this down, the reason why I use the 15-yard zero is because from zero distance all the way to 100 yards, uh, I can put my dot in the center of a 12 inch target and I can hit it without having to hold over or do any adjustments. Right. Um, so that's, so that's why I use the 15 yard zero with the, with the 22 long rifle. <clears throat> now, I mean, can you use something different? Uh, for example, let's say you set your zero at 50 yards, which I have tried, right? So if, if you set your zero at 50 yards, uh, what's going to happen is, it's just gonna it's gonna come up it's gonna kiss it at 50 yards and then it's it's just gonna start dropping so you get a single zero but what would have to happen that at at uh, 100 yards I need to hold 
above the target, right? So I have to hold like from the center of my 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 target, I have to hold a full, you know, six inches above the target and make adjustments. And then if I go out to 150 yards, now I kind of have to guess where I have to hold it because at 150 yards, right? When I'm when I am six inches low at 100 yards, at 150 at 150 yards, I just go I can go 12 inches high, and I can hit these targets. Um, what I find is uh, if you're using a dot and you, if you try to hold over more than 12 inches, it's because you can kind of you can kind of you know look at your dot and know where 12 inches above the target is. But then if you try to hold more than 12 inches, like if you try to hold like uh, like uh, you know, 18 inches or 24 inches, it, it it becomes too much of a guessing game. So I have found that the most I can hold over a target is about 12 inches. And, and be like consistent every time. I mean, I can go two feet over the target, but then I start seeing that my groups like really start opening up, okay? Uh, so that's why with the, uh, with the 22s, I like using that 15 yard zero because from zero distance all the way out to 100 yards on these 12, on these targets that are 12 inches tall, I can put the dot on the target, like in the center of the target, and I'm gonna hit it every time. Right. Uh, now, if you're using a different zero, like let's say you're using the 50 yards here, right? It's not, you know, between zero distance all the way out to 75 yards, it's not going to make a difference. You'll still be able to hit that six inch plate. Uh, th but then it becomes a guessing game once you get to 100 yards and start going beyond that. That, that, that tends to be more of a guessing game. Okay. So, so it doesn't make a difference whether you're using a 15 yard zero, a 20 yard zero, a 50 yard zero if you're only going to be shooting inside of 75 yards with the 22 but if you plan to shoot let's say 100 yards and 150 yards regularly like i do um the 15 yard zero works really good for me so and, and anybody that's uh that's new to this, this concept with the standard ar-15 right like i got over here uh, what what is very common is to use a 50 yard zero right with your 556 five, which gives you that second zero at uh, at 200 yards and then at 100 yards you get an apex which is about four inches high okay because so same deal you know so 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 this these numbers would change so instead of that being 15 it's 50 then apex 100 plus four inches second zero 200 uh sometimes people will use a a um uh, a 25 yard zero which now that will give you your second zero at 300 yards. Uh, and that's great if you're out in the desert. I'm not out in the desert, you know, so for the type of shooting that I do, I use a 50 yard zero for my ARs uh, and I use the 15 yard zero for my 22. It's now, one other thing I wanna talk to you guys about, if you look over here, okay, I got a standard uh, AR-15, right? Shoots 5.56 five, caliber. But what I did is I took out, the 5.56 five, bolt, right? And I put in this CMMG 22 conversion bolt. Okay, so what that does is it allows, see, see since the 5.56 five, and the 22 long rifle are pretty much the same diameter, uh, this conversion bolt allows me to shoot these uh, 22 long rifle, right? Same things over here, 22 long rifle in my standard uh, AR-15s that normally shoot 5.56. Five, but here's the thing, this scope is uh, zeroed in for 50 yards, okay? So at 50 yards, I got, I got you know, point of, aim, point of impact. At 100 yards, I'm four inches high. At 200 yards, I got my second zero. When I put the 22, um, when I put that uh, 22 conversion bolt in there, those zeros don't transfer over. So what happens is, I'm going to pause this camera because I got a plane flying overhead and you guys are going to start losing me. Hold on. Okay. Airplane's almost done. You know, until you start doing videos, you don't realize how loud air, those, those little airplanes are. I mean, things like way up, I don't know, 10, 20, 10,000 feet maybe. Not, you know, and it's still so loud. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, I got an AR-15 here with a 22 conversion bolt. This has a 50 yard zero. But when I put the 22s in there, um, all that changes all right so um what happens is at 50 yards um basically the i have to my point of aim is now six inches high so i have to go six inches high 
in order to hit the bullseye at 50 yards. Okay, yeah. And then at 100 yards, um, with that 22 conversion bolt, I am 12 inches high. So I have to go 12 inches high. Now, at 150 yards, remember what I said earlier that you know, if you're trying to hold over more than 12 inches with a dot, it, you know, it, it's really hard to lose your frame of reference and know that it's very hard to know the difference between 12 inches and 18 inches or 20 inches. But the nice thing is about this scope, it has that 65 MOA circle. Um, so at 150 yards, right, uh, what, what happens is um, I've got that scope has a dot with a 65 MOA circle. And I, if I'm shooting at a target that is basically uh, 12 by 12, which is basically more or less the size of a torso, if I anchor my the bottom of my 65 mm away circle to the bottom of that 12 inch target, uh, that gets me very close to the center. Okay, so I use the 65 mm away circle that way. So on a 12 inch target, which uh, let's say about the size of this, right? So when you have you have your dot here. What you're going to do is that's going to end up someplace up here right so what you do is you use the big circle right the 65 mm circle and you anchor the bottom of the circle um to the bottom of your 12 inch target and your 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 bullets are going to hit pretty close to the center uh a couple of things are going to affect that i mean for the length of your barrel uh with these 22 rifles you're probably using a 16 inch but with the conversion bolt you could just as easily be using um you know an ar pistol so that's the nice thing about the conversion bolt. You can pretty much throw that conversion bolt into any AR of any barrel size, you know. Um, so the other thing that's going to make a difference with these 22s is, is the bolt weight, right? Uh, is it 36 inches? Is it, uh, is, it, is it 36 grains? Is it 40 grains? So the weight of the bolt is, is going to make a difference probably more than the weight of a bolt, let's say, of your 5.56, five, five, right? Because, you know, because, uh, um, I, I, I mean, that's what I have found. I, I mean... When I go, for, let's say, from a 62 grain to a to a six to, from a 55 grain to a 62 grain, 5.56, five, at 100 yards, I you know it, it's a really minor difference. But but with the 22s, when you go from 36 to 40 and, and back, you're going to see more a bit more of a shift with these 22. Okay? So I uh, hope that information was was useful to you guys. Um, and basically, that you know, but my standard zero on a dedicated. 22 uh, rifle uh, is 15 yards and I have experimented with 20 or 25 yards there's lots of things out there that people uh, will use and they're you know inside of 75 you know up or rather up to 75 yards they're all good it's not going to make a difference it's going to make a difference if you're trying to get to 100 yards and and get all the way out to even 150 yards uh, that's where I find that that 15 yard zero um, makes a difference because, because it's a 15 yard zero. Basically, you, the, the remember what I said earlier here, right? That line of sight is straight, the barrel is pointed up. Well, if you're using a 15 yard zero, your barrel is being pointed up very aggressively, all right? You got a very aggressive climb. So, what that's going to do is it's going to rise up and then you're going to get. You're gonna get really high at you know you know being plus three inches at 50 yards, so that's gonna push out that second zero a little further out. Versus let's say if I use a 50 yard zero, well then it's just gonna to touch it at 50 yards and then from there it just keeps going down. So the goal here is to push the second zero out as far as possible. So. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed that information. If, let me know what zero you guys use, uh, it, it, why you like it. You know, maybe you have some ideas that I haven't thought of. So put that in the comment section. You know, I'm I'm just you know I'm a big believer in there's more ways there's more than one way to do things. Okay, um, so it's not like it's my way and this is the best way and the only way. Um, I do it the way I do it for a very specific reason, and in my case, that specific reason is because. I shoot at 100 yards, going out to 150 yards with 22s. Uh, now, you, for example, you might have a completely different scope. You might have a, a scope that has like a, a turrets on it, you know, that you can where you can change your, you know, where you can change your point of impact. Um, you know, you might have a completely different scope. And, you know, everything I said uh, is based on a standard AR scope, right? That has that two and 
three quarter inch rise. So thanks for watching. Drop some comments. If you're not a member of the channel, subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Odyssey. On my channel name over there is Pocono Tactical. And also on Rumble. On Rumble, I am Pocono Guns. I'll talk to you all soon.